weeks makes it a year since I actually started uh, talking some shit, basically, and getting paid for it. So it's not that bad, not that bad of a gig. So um, as in the title, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the difficulties with nitrous tuning. Um, basically, why I dislike tuning nitrous remotely. Um, and hint, it has nothing to do with the kit. It has nothing to do with nitrous itself. Um, then for those of you that are that give a shit, because a lot of you are still kind of like, I don't know, knuckle draggers, not all of you, but I'd like to think that a lot of you are pretty open-minded when it comes to electric cars, seeing how the Teslas run and seeing that electric drags go 200 mile an hour. And the Cobra Jet, the Cobra Jet um, Ford program, electric, uh, was on the dyno. It sounds like it has a C4 or maybe some kind of turbo 400. Oh, it's not C4. That's really stupid. It's a turbo 400 auto because um, I don't think a C4 will last a hit. <laughs> and it ended up sounding really good like it really meaning it was spinning the rollers fast enough to make you realize that thing is making a lot of power so it'll be interesting once we get once we get some numbers out of that cobra jet to see what it actually made everyone's like what's up cuz no okay, my cuz uh people are commenting on the weld wheels back there and i'll let you know what those are going on and how i got them and all this stuff um you know we'll talk about that during the show later on but we got enough people on that we can start talking the first thing i want to start talking about is nitrous tuning nitrous tuning nitrous tuning so the thought process on nitrous by and large based on my experience is it's cheap it's cheap it's cheap it's cheap so I think what nitrous is lacks for like price wise, like it's so cheap, but you have to know a lot about nitrous to run it properly. Now, today and yesterday have been probably the busiest two days I've ever had tuning. I don't know why. I had over 180 replies one day and then the next, I think today was over 120. I'm saying replies, meaning I generate an email and I send it. If my computer was a little quicker, this thing, I mean, I could really, really, uh, you know, get a lot of shit done. But this is what's going on with nitrous tuning. Like, first of all, a simple, a simple Google search, Brett Burke is in the house. A simple Google search will help you so much with nitrous understanding what it is proper bottle pressure there are countless youtube videos there is just so exactly brian says nitrous is a thing of the past and i agree in coyote mustangs specifically i just don't think it's something that unless you're willing to spend the money i'm telling you unless you're willing to spend the money and get a direct port nitrous system and all of the safety measures, the controllers, the proper bottle heater, the purge, if you want to get, you know, automatic stuff and computer controlled systems, you're going to spend Paxton money close to it. Paxton money. And that's the problem. Everyone's like, well, should I go with a Paxton that gives me 250 more rear wheel horsepower all the time or a nitrous system that I probably spend a thousand less. I'm saying for a proper setup, a proper setup. In the last two days, I have had people that I believe got nitrous because it was cheap. And a lot of people, you know, they ask the techs at whether it's Holly, you know, Nitrous, Nitrous Express or whatever. And I think some of the people on the other line, not to talk badly about any of those companies, but are giving bad advice. Let me just start you off with what happened not too long ago. I had a guy said, I got a nitrous kit in my car. Um, I do the same thing I always do. I give you a base 93 tune, then a nitrous base tune, which is timing pulled and a little bit richer. That's it. How much are you going to run? 100 shot. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. So this is what I say. I need you to log this without nitrous. And I put it in all capitals. Without nitrous. And do you know how many times I get back logs and I look at the log and I'm like, what's that lean spike? Did you hit it? Did you, did you put, did you run this with nitrous? He goes, yeah, you told me to hit it with nitrous. I, <laughs> I go here and that sets the tone for the rest of the tuning session. So now I'm short with people now because I honestly, if you come, if you come to me with nitrous, I assume you know how nitrous works. I assume you know how to read. I assume you know how to understand the words that I'm writing back to you. 
I assume too much. I assume way too much. So this guy, boom, gives me a nitrous hit. And I'm just like, it's fucking lean as shit or it's fat as shit. And you probably blew it up. Well, well, why? Because the load range his car was generating had more timing. I thought the coyotes, you know, generate 0.89 to 1.01 load. He must have been up in the fucking sticks somewhere and was generating no air load and it saw good timing. And I'm just like, another guy came back to me and I said, give me this log without nitrous. The log looked clean as hell. So this is what I tell people when it comes to nitrous. Get me a log on nitrous. Activate the nitrous at 3,800 or so. Turn it off by about 7,200 or so, especially if it's an auto car, because I don't want the nitrous on on a shift. So what happens? They read that as floor it and activate the nitrous at the same time. No, I want you to floor it just before it. 3,000 RPMs, begin the sweep, then boom, nitrous on, nitrous off, then a shift happens. That's how I want it to look. And I explained that explicitly, you know, explicitly in the email and you know how many times people i'm like did you hit it at 2000 and the knock sensors the knock sensors hate life why because a lot of the solenoids are hard mounted somewhere either on the throttle body or on the actual intake manifold or in the valley where the knock sensors are located and the knock sensors pull back all the timing on the planet so i go oh my god oh my god so I probably tuned, let's say in the last four months, I probably tuned 20 nitrous guys. 15 have had issues. 15. And out of those 15, 10 are self inflicted. You know, like they themselves don't understand what nitrous is. I asked them, what was bottle pressure? They're like, I don't know. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean you don't know what bottle pressure was? Do you have a bottle warmer? I just heat it up with a torch. I'm like, motherfucker, this isn't street outlaws. Get a nice bottle warmer and regulate it so that you have like at least a thousand PSI in the thing and then purge it because what happens if you don't purge, you get a bunch of, you know, this is what every time I hear a guy with nitrous says the same thing is when I hit it, it nosed over and then it came back like it, then it really came back. And I go, so that means that you had air in it. You didn't purge it. Do you have a purge system? No. Where do you purge it? Well, I just rev the engine up and purge it inside the motor. And I'm like, that's okay if you're revving it, you know, but these guys are not revving it. These guys are idling it and going, shh, 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 shh. then they floor it and it goes, hoo, pah, pah, and then they're blaming everything on me. It is now my fault that they don't know how to read. They don't know what spark plugs to put in. They don't know when to activate it. They don't know. So it is now my fault. Uh, Eric York paid $2 and says, I have about 2,500 in my kit. That's about right. To have everything either computer controlled, window switch, bottle warmer, purge, something that all you have to do is floor it and it all just happens in the background like a supercharger. It's beautiful. You just, you, okay, uh, bottle pressure thousand, purge, okay, everything is controlled and you just go, what? Data log it, send it to me and guess what? Everything looks really good. But nine times out of 10, what's happening? Guys have a button here wound up around their wrist. They're steering and they're doing this as a traction control device. You know, on, off, on, off while the wheels are spinning, not spinning, spinning, not spinning. You know, they're doing this shit because this is traction control. Then they're slamming. And I'm like, <sighs> so the issue with nitrous tuning is you. You. You're the issue with nitrous tuning. You are cheap. You don't listen. You don't do research before even buying a nitrous kit you just say nitrous a thousand bucks or i can piece together my own kit because i have three i have three you know solenoids sitting there i have a couple of bottles and a couple of lines i can make my own nitrous kit i know what the fuck i'm doing even though i've never fucked with coyotes before i'm gonna count on the fact that i'm gonna turn the nitrous on and off by my finger and guess what happens you forget you fuck up you activate it early you don't you know purge the bottle so many variables when I was growing up, I knew enough about nitrous to make me go, no, I don't want to deal with it. Back then, it was it was very archaic, even though it's still archaic at this to this day. But I had to, I was like, to do it properly, in my opinion, I didn't want to shove a nitrous uh, jet or a nitrous uh, nozzle in front of the mass airflow sensor 
hope that in a Fox body, hope that the injectors saw cold air, you know, like like a, a false reading, flooded the engine with fuel. I just I just didn't count on any of that shit. And sure enough, a couple of couple of shots through it made me super nervous. And I said, no, to do it properly, I want to do a direct port, you know, like a badass setup, and it'd be good. I knew enough to go, this is not for me. So I left it alone. But the problem is because it's cheap, everyone is thinking nitrous is this gonna be the savior. Look, guys, at best. If you have you, you can probably put a 150 shot on a coyote, maybe a 175 shot. And that's only if it's on E85, only if the knock sensors are off with your permission, meaning they'll blow up, only if the spark plugs are gapped to the proper gap and the proper heat range, the proper fuel. That's the other thing. You guys are out there saying, I have a wet shot. And the standalone fuel system, and again, this isn't something that happened recently. This has been going on since I've started tuning. Everything, they say, I have a standalone fuel system that it gets its wet shot from there. I have E85 in the tank and I have 110 octane in the standalone system. Will it be okay? I say, no. You have 9.85 stoic fuel in the tank. You have 14.0 stoic fuel in your standalone system. What do you think is going to happen if the tune is set up for E85 and it sees denser fuel shot in there? It's going to go fat as fuck. Other people say things like, well, I have 93 in my standalone system and a E85 in my tank. Or they don't know what E85 is because 50% of you do not know what E85 is. To this day, people say, I filled up with E85. No, it's reading about E70 according to the logs. No, no, the pump said E85. Okay, so you have no idea. You literally have no idea what E85 means. You have no idea. You have no idea because E85 is after it's tested and you go, it's 85%. But no, they say things like, I have E85 in my standalone system and 93 in the tank. And I go, what? And, and I just indulge them. I go, why do you think that's okay? Well, E85 has 105 octane. <laughs> True, but it also is a less dense fuel than 93 octane. The word dense has so many... I love using that word because that's usually the word that is fitting to that conversation. I'm like, well, the fuel is less dense. They're like, what does that mean? I'm like, exactly. Exactly. You have no idea what the word even means. So we, we have to start just babysitting and, and, and spoon feeding people. And that becomes really tough doing remotely. So this is what I would urge. If you were thinking of going nitrous ever, do a bunch of reading, go to Google, and just type in nitrous tuning, nitrous tips and tricks, nitrous kits called Nitrous Express or Nitrous Oxide Systems or, or uh, whoever and say, I don't know shit. I need the basic 101 setup on Coyote Mustangs or any or just how nitrous works. There are so many tutorials, but the problem is people don't do that. People go, I got my COVID check and that's 1200 bucks. So I'm going to buy a nitrous kit and I'm going to go ahead and put it in this car and it's going to run a badass number. And it never ends up that way. It always ends up being an issue. It's just a tremendous nightmare trying to tune remotely. So if you're thinking about nitrous, but you have money, just forget nitrous. Forget nitrous. Just get it out of your mind. Get a Paxson kit and you'll be, you'll be good because that, that's the cheapest kit out there, right? Cheapest kit out there is a Vortec V3 or a Paxson 2200 and put it in your car and be done, Okay. Because trust me, that kit will make you 200 more rear wheel horsepower than you got currently NA, whereas a nitrous kit, like a 100 shot, 150 shot, I'll get you about that in the rear wheel. So you'd be lucky to make 600 wheel on a 150 shot on like a Gen 3, maybe 610, you know, if it's really sweet and we want to lean on it. And a lot of people go, I want to be aggressive with it. I want you to, you know, really give it, give it the, the gusto. And I'm like, okay, you, you okay with me blowing it up? And they're like, no. And I'm like, so this is what you got. This is what you got. What you got is all that I'm willing to give you. But it's only making 620 rear wheel horsepower. My buddy with an 82 millimeter pulley on a pa on a pro on a Roush kit made 675. Right, it's supercharged. Oh, they then they get all bent out of shape. They don't understand. They don't get it. They 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 then then of course they do the tuner shopping game. They go to this tuner, to that tuner, to that tuner. Then it blows up. And guess where they end up? Back where they started back here and they're like i want to tune for a paxton setup i want to tune for a roush setup i want to tune for a whipple setup so that's my biggest issue 
with nitrous tuning. The misinformation, the lack of information, the thought process around nitrous because it's cheap, it's something that they want, but it is cheap because it requires a lot of know-how and knowledge and it is up to you to make it work. It's 100% up to you to make it work. I'll talk electric Cobra Jet and list racing in a bit, but we have some questions piling up on the paid side. So I want to make sure I don't want to get too backed up because those sometimes tend to get a little crazy. So I want to make sure I get to them. Uh, David Jaffrey says, on today's show, Vinny Ethanol going to become Vinny Nitrous and rant away on the dumb and dumber. Yeah. I had a guy I had a guy the other day that got, got all bent out of shape about me talking about be talking shit about three valve saying I'm talking out the side of my neck. I owned a Windvale Blue three valve. It almost got beat by a stock Mazda Speed 3. That's why I sold it. I'm like, I'm not even going to try to mod this thing. This thing's gay and slow. Power by the Hour Performance checking in says, Electric is going to be a big part of the automotive future. The performance aftermarket will adapt, will have to adapt or will adapt and make it fun and challenge. Thank you for your support, Alex. Frank Perdomo checking in. The Electric Cobra Jet sounded good on that dyno. It, it, it spun up those rollers real fast. And of course, with a Turbo 400 and whatever delivery system they, they have for power management is interesting because electric motors can go zero to full song in a second. So I wonder what kind of ramping in of power they have, what kind of variable frequency drive or what kind of, what kind of drive system do they have feeding the power to the, uh, to the rear wheels? That'd be interesting. Tony Bolton says, everyone just buy a Pro Charger and uh, MFP crank support. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Jam says, thanks for the video on adaptive octane logic the other day. You're welcome. That's one of those videos that I've been trying to make for a real long time. And guess how many emails I got today about adaptive octane logic. Now, I had a customer that had a S197 and he said, look, I saw your video about adaptive octane logic. But when I put octane booster in my car, it does not add more timing. I said, right, because you're already hitting the cap. You're already at the cap. My car had a window of 13 degrees to 17 degrees. His was stuck at 15. I said, this is as much as I'm willing to send it on your Canadian pump gas. And he's like, well, can we bump up the timing with a, a couple degrees with Octane Booster? I said, absolutely. So I gave him a tune that had more timing. So the adaptive logic now has a bigger window to operate in for sure. Explain that a 75 shot isn't always 75. DJ Smith, very good. So a lot of people, they get the pill and then they, they go, oh, okay, okay, the, a 38 jet and a 50 nitrous or whatever, put it in and I put a 75 shot and it made 60 more. They're like, wait a minute, I added a 75 shot. <laughs> then sometimes you get cars, depending on timing, they put a 75 shot in and it gets a hundred more rear wheel horsepower. Well, why is that? Well, the, many variables. Um, some kits, <laughs> depending on how they're labeled and how the jets are labeled, I mean, it's, it's a range. It's a range. It's like a 75 shot, a 100 shot. You know, it's one of those things where it's just like an orifice. And depending on timing, how happy your motor is, how sweet your fuel is, it'll atomize that fuel nicely. It'll be like, it'll be like hey, this, this, is, uh, this is some sweet shit right here. And it's probably just going to produce. I've seen guys with a 100 shot produce 110 to the wheel. So that is like a 130 shot or something like that. And I've seen guys with 150 shots produce 125 to the rear wheel and they're stumped. And I'm like, look, your car and the pump gas is only tolerating about 20 degrees of spark or 19 degrees of spark. I, and the knock sensors are pulling it back. So it could be how sweet the fuel is, how happy the motor is, and literally the orifice of the jet. If it's off a little bit, it'll produce varying types of horsepower depending on the jet size it's not always commensurate with the shot size 75 is not always going to make 75 100 is not going to always make 100 it'll make around about that area fernando ariza ariza says laugh car makes car go happy and fast <clears throat> not sometimes sometimes the knock sensors hate life why the solenoids are bolted to somewhere hard like the block the the cam cover, throttle body, and when it activates, it it sends a resonance through the engine bay, and the knock sensors go, something's going on up there, and they pull timing. And if you're on pump gas, I'm not going to turn off the knock sensors. I want to make sure that they're doing their job, because for all I know, it's actually picking up an issue. If you're on E85, I'm a little more likely to turn stuff off to make sure the car runs right. Bondo Bird, Bondo Bird in the house. Bondo Bird, I think, works for Whipple. And I like having him on because sometimes he gives gives us little hints as to what's coming. Um, Bondobur says, settle this non-car debate, cuh. Pork or chicken in, in pozole? So I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, I say real Mexicans use pork. Those who use chicken think Taco Bell real Mexican food. Bueno, uh, 
Primo, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm a Puerto Rican, but I'm like an Americanized Puerto Rican, so I don't even give it. I'm not that Puerto Rican. I'm just like, by, by my mom and dad are Puerto Rican. I'm just like a, a brown white guy. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I, I thought a torta was a pussy. Like when I went to Houston, somebody said, tu quieres comer torta? And I'm like, where can I get some torta? He's like, oh, down the street, there's a truck. I'm like, Whoa. you guys... <laughs> Ustedes tienen torta en una troca? I'm like, they're like, oh, what do you think a torta is? I'm like, what do you think a torta is? And they ended up saying that is a, like, like a, like a closed off kind of like a, what do you call it? Like a, not a chalupa, but it's just, it's just kind of enclosed, breaded, and has a bunch of stuff, stuffed inside of it. So sorry, Bondo Bird, I have no idea. I'm a chicken guy, sorry. So yeah, maybe that's, maybe I'm one of those Mexican Taco Bell, uh, Taco Bell wannabes, but I like chicken, not pork. Eric York says, I have about 2500 in my kit. Got him already. Manny Gibson says, I work at a Ford dealer and may be able to get a Gen 3 short block. I have a Gen 1 car and plan to go boost. Can I make that combo work? I don't know if the Gen 1 heads will bolt onto the Gen 3 bottom end. You'd have to, since you're a Ford tech, why don't you flip a, uh, a Coyote head and see if a Gen 3 head gasket mates up or a Gen 2 head gasket mates up. If it doesn't, I think a Gen 2 head can fit a Gen 3 bottom end, but I do not know and have not seen a Gen 1 head gasket-wise made up to a Gen 3 bottom end as of yet. I'm sorry I can't answer that, but I'm sure that people like Power by the Hour soon will be able to answer those questions. <laughs> F-150 S550 says, I don't listen, ask John Jr. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Most don't listen, man. Reading comprehension. So what does reading comprehension mean? It means do you understand the words that they're typing to you? Now, a lot of people that are good at, you know, test taking and succeed academically, they they get they have excellent reading comprehension, meaning the words that are being put down on paper or on your screen, you understand. Imagine trying to type to somebody how to tie their shoe. Think about that. Okay, take your left hand, like like describe tying your shoes to somebody so clearly that they understand it perfectly. It's very difficult. So if someone's explaining a difficult subject to you over text and you don't understand what they're saying, it's going to be a problem. So sometimes we have to sit there and babysit these guys and spoon feed them basic information and then they use us as google i'm like no guys use google as google don't use us as google cuban coyote says i had everything for the 200 shot and it wasn't having it she rolled out though she was way better than, she way better with boost though cuban coyote 200 shot ended up blowing up and he had all the safety measures he had everything and his knock sensors were like fuck you fuck you and i'm like dude I don't want to turn them off. And if I turn them off, your shit might, it might be an actual issue. And he ended up having an issue, hurt the motor, built it, put a Paxton in it, makes 800 something, 50 rear wheel horsepower. He's chilling. He's happy. Leak Leak says, should I Carolina squat my Mustang to minimize the weight transfer from a dig? So Carolina squat, I guess, is when you do half a lift kit. <laughs> Basically, trucks are like this in Carolina. It's uh, no worse than people buying american force wheels and and there's they're way outside the, the well like way outside the well like like way the offsets way fucked people think that's a good look i guess i'm old because i think that looks like shit but i think a carolina squat isn't isn't it's as gay as shitty offset wheels oh what are you talking about american forces or whatever the fuck the wheels are called they're badass yeah they're expensive but if you have the shitty offset and they look stupid it doesn't mean you're fucking cool it means you spent a lot of money and still have no taste just because you have money mean doesn't mean you got taste. And half of the guys here in Loxahatchee proved that. Three Valve Eric says, <clears throat> where are you, Three Valve Eric? Three Valve Eric, shit, where'd you go? Three Valve Eric. Okay, Three Valve Eric says, for channel support and many good laughs. Give me 20 bucks. Thank you very much. Um, Leak Leak says, any good aftermarket horns? I want to put a couple horns in my grill like an STI. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a lot. To, that's a waste of $5 aftermarket horns. What the fuck do I know? Aftermarket horn. Get a train horn. Alex, Alex, re-release why being cheap is counterproductive. I go back and watch that because it's so fitting with today's people. I could do that. I could I could just take excerpts of it and then put it out there. I don't. I didn't even know I had that video. I forgot about it. But yeah, I'll look it up. I'll make a little note about that. And um, I'll see if it's fitting today. Hey, Alex, Josh Hubble here. Josh Hubble in the house with his Ford Probe. That guy's rocking a Ford Probe, and he's buying all these funky cars. He sold his 18 Mustang, which was a nine-second car with pump gas on 93, 
and Torco or, or Octanium. It was a V7 though, V7, not a V3, JT, A10, nine second car, period. He says, Josh Hubble here. I've been a while. Just want to say hello and support the channel. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. I gave him 10 bucks because obviously he sold the Mustang and he freed up some funds. He's a smart dude too. He's one of those guys that you can tell he has like an engineering mindset. He's, he's, he's super nice. He let us borrow the struts from his car to put on the blue goose after we did that wheelie so that we can make one more pass. What a guy. And Steve hooked him up. Like, dude, you're a badass dude. Here's, here's, here's a replacement set of struts. Super cool dude. DJ Smith asked about the 75 shot. I already explained that. El Coyote says, I installed the watt box on my packs and Coyote. When I no lift shift at watt, the RPMs get lazy and drop around 5,000 RPMs. What would you advise? So you go into the software. Okay, this is, okay. El Coyote, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate driver aids. I hate driver aids because now you're dependent on them. So now you have to tune that watt box. I believe the watt box has a feature in there that you can lessen the amount of time where it cuts off and comes back on, if I'm not mistaken. It, you have to fine tune that. The, I don't give two shits about a watt box. The only reason I would use a watt box is like as a two step, like to floor it, keep it at a predetermined RPM for launch and go. Because as a manual guy, I like to floor it, breathe on the gas a little bit, meaning just lift just slightly and just go, you know, just get, get that sucker in a gear by breathing on the gas and unloading the engine momentarily. A lot of people just want to leave it to the floor jam the gear down, let the watt box do the work, and this is what happens. A huge delay, then a big flame comes out the back, and it's a cool, but now you have to fine-tune the watt box, and I'm not that familiar with it, El Coyote, about fine-tuning the watt box for that feature, for meaning it, it's, like a, it's like a delay or hysteresis or whatever they call it, um, where it, it cuts off and comes back on, and I'm sure you have to fine-tune that in the software because watt box has software you can uh, manipulate. Channel support, Beto. Scott N, thank you very much. Some Canadian money. Jeff gave me two bucks. Says nitrous is for the poor. It's not. For, I would try. I would do nitrous in the red car if I can get like a 5C converter, axles. I, I can't get axles. I just need a converter. And uh, 727 and 757 and I are working on a deal for 373 swap in this car. So that'll be interesting if I can make it go like 10s and A and then shove a 150 shot in it and see if we can go nines with a little 150 shot just to see if we could. S Static Sanction says, what's your best advice for fitting a wheel on a Brembo car? GT350 to be exact. I would have to have five millimeter or so to make it clear or hub centric spacer, best advice without brake conversion. Hub centric spacer is probably the only thing I do or the ones that actually bolt onto the hub and then have its own studs coming out. But I'm not a big fan of spacers. I currently have spacers in the white car and I'm always leery of taking turns. I don't, I don't turn that car hard and aggressively. So that means I'm just not a big fan of the offset of the wheels. I'd rather just get the right offset wheels. To be honest with you, static sanction, I just can't recommend spacers. Now, some people say spacers are fine. A lot of the Yee Yee trucks in the Loxahatchee have 15 spacers stacked on 15 spacers for their proper shitty offset wheels. I just don't want to play that game. So I'm sorry. I don't think I'll be able to help you when it comes to advice on that in particular because if anything, a, a, a hub centric spacer or one of those spacers, like an iBox spacer, that's like 200 bucks. It's not cheap that you bolt on and then it has its own studs coming out and you can get it another, I think you can get them in varying thicknesses or sizes. Paul Monaco, the old owner, the second owner of my black car after I sold it. A couple weeks ago, you brought up the Mustang too. Speaking of toilets, I owned, I used to own one, a green 1972 Mustang Grande with a 351 Cleveland and a C3 Trans. What a dud. Be careful. John Lund Sr. loves those Mustangs. 727, 757 gave me 20 bucks. That's channel support, brother. I should be giving you money. You mean you're going to do a trade real soon. And Zane Mustang from Houston saying that Whipple throttle body you, you like, the 132, would that be a good choice for a Cobra Jet setup? Can I fit it? Better drivability than the regular monoblade and same power or better with a twin jet 67. So you have to get, if you have to make a, you have to make an adapter uh, in Zane because honestly, it does not fit the Cobra jet bull pattern, but where there's a will, there's a way. And if you know somebody that knows how to make some nice spacer, I think that throttle body is so legit. I love the Whipple 132 throttle body. That's probably what's going to end up going in this car if it goes in a Cobra jet. So if you can get a spacer or a adapter to fit it on a Cobra jet setup, and it has to be specific for its generation. So if you have a Gen 1, you got to get a Gen 1 with Gen 1 electronics, but a 132, and you got to make an adapter. And I think it's the better one of the monoblades. But NA, I think all you really need is a Twin 67, Twin 65, or the VMP Twin 69 with its specific uh, electronics for its generation in Zane. David Jaffrey. 
Where the hell are you, David? You just skipped around all over the place. Holy shit. Alex, out here looking like a ghetto version of Pitbull says Ku instead of Dali. Dali? Dali is like a weird Cuban thing. Dali. Dali what? Dali is give it. Dali. Like, Cubans say the pinga. Puerto Ricans don't say the pinga. They don't say the pinga. That's like the weirdest fucking thing. The pinga. Dali. Like, when I, I, when I, when I was first talking to a girl here, I was like, hey, I'll talk to you later. She goes, Dali. And I'm like, block, delete. <laughs> Dale, cállate. Yo, how about that steering wheel mod? Cuh? Love the show. Steering wheel mod? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Car seems to struggle to idle. Tango says. Car seems to struggle to idle after I do a pull and rarely, rarely will it die in the 85 flex tune. I've tried engine braking the car. It still seems like it wants to die after a pull, possibly a vacuum line. If you're in the middle of a pull, meaning if you're making a pull, then you put it in neutral. Remember, a bunch of air is flying into your into your cold air. And you're at idle. So all that air rushing the math, it's probably like wigging out the math, but the throttle's shut. So you're going to have some potential surge or some kind of surging or undulation until you come to a stop. Unless you're saying after a pull and you're about to come to a stop that it almost dies and comes back. We have a fix for that if it's Luntuned. Tango. And the reason it won't do it on 85 because the 85 inherently has more octane and the car sees more spark so it's less likely to die because it's just happier <clears throat> wiley coyote says i see there are plug and play baps and splice inversions from jms what bap do you recommend paired with a detroit 95 any don't matter to me it doesn't matter to me because it all tunes the same it doesn't matter you could do a plug and play vmp a plug and play vortex version a plug and play uh v jms it doesn't matter to me because they all tune the same J Card says, Alex, with the known cooler IAT, is is it better? Okay, Jesus Christ. Alex, with the known cooler IAT, is better? Why does it seem only recently IC core and efficiency has become a main argument between blower brands? Digging the wheels in the back. Thanks. Um, because there wasn't that much available. See, like VMP was stuck with whatever Roush had to offer. That's it. So their only way of getting you to get cooler IAT was after the fact with a heat exchanger. So the, 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 the fin design that Roush had in their blower, uh, lower intercooler, was good enough. Uh, then people started going crazy with boost, 69 millimeter pulleys, 15 plus PSI, and all of a sudden these things started really generating a lot of heat. A lot of tuners were asked to raise up the IAT retard function so that it doesn't pull as much timing with higher IATs. But you run the risk of burning that sucker down. So people were running ice tanks. Ice tanks were the solution. Now with the top mount superchargers, meaning on top of the motor, not a centrifugal, and the upside down blower where the blow, the rotors are on the bottom and the, the inner cooler is on the top. Now you're seeing a more efficient, you know, air charge and a more efficient setup where it goes rotor up and you have more room for that inner cooler brick. So now people like VMP and Whipple and all these other companies are providing wider and bigger intercooler with bigger um, diameter pipes to get more cooling in there. And it's only because the supercharger design has come a long way since the old intercooler under the blower, where now the intercooler is above the blower, giving the car much more room and a bigger lid to put a huge intercooler break up there or a couple. So that's the reason now people are kind of like giving a shit because technology has come around and it's made blowers super efficient. And now manufacturers are taking advantage and offering you cooling mods because the brick is so big and so wide that they can sell you another, another product for sure. <clears throat> ADL Chavez or Adiel Chavez. Hey Alex, ever since I've been on E85, my O2 testers have gone out multiple times and I angled them and still have the same issue. Any advice? Love the live stream. Uh, so it, it, it depends on what's going on in your area, right? So are you parking the car somewhere where it's super moist? Like there's a lot of moisture in the air. There's a there's a very wet garage. Are you in the Northeast where the temperature changes all the time? Are you in a muggy environment? Okay, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, moisture is what kills O2s. So if you, even if you angle them, okay, even if you angle them, but if you are, and you don't drive the car often, that's the other thing. If you did not drive, that car has the same O2 sensors. It's had for five years, I drive it every day. It's on E85 all the time. So I get, I think it's a couple of things. Where it's stored, the use, the quality of E85 you're getting, 
there's a multiple multiple reasons why your O2s are going out. Yeah, you angle them, but it still might not be enough if you're storing that sucker somewhere where it's super wet or you don't drive it enough. Cuban Coyote says, I actually bought a brand new block and transfer over my OPGs and cams. If I were able to do head sets, can I go to a 3 to 1, three to one pulley? I heard they lift heads after 15 pounds of boost. Yeah. Um, the Blue Goose had a 2.9 pulley Cuban Coyote for a very long time on its Vortec V7. And that thing was like a 930 car automatic. It was, it was, it, it was pretty good. No head studs. But it did. I don't know if it lifted a head, but if it did, not it was damn close. Omar Garza says, Edelbrock 2650 with a, with a Seth Whipple auxiliary idle bracket. Is Seth White the new Scott Hasty? By the way, congrats to Scott Hasty taking his, uh, he, he makes sure to tell you it is six speed. His six speed. Uh, <laughs> S197 running 8.1 with a Whipple supercharger. Very good. I don't think he hit all six gears down the track. He might have only used three or four. So congrats. So Omar Garza says, with the Seth White auxiliary idle bracket is the way to go. No slip, 275, sick trip gang. Seth White, shout out. H-Town. Also, make sure your filter's nice and tight, Omar Garza, so it doesn't fall in the box and you have weird trim issues. But yeah, Seth White's uh, car, uh, little um, auxiliary bracket seems to be making waves in the Edelbrock Supercharged community. Oh, says Coyote in the house. Just got just sent them a tune not too long ago. Uh, he said, yo, startup map, turned on first try, shit's perfect, idle's on point, had to leave work so I didn't get you a log, uh, I'll attempt it tomorrow. Thanks again, Alex. Hey, I got you rolling, got the car out of the garage, now you can get me the logs, take your time. That 5C converter with the on three and this Cobra Jet, it'll be an interesting, it'll be interesting to see how that car responds to those setups. I probably just gave away your whole, your whole setup and all the graduations know what you got. <laughs> Osvaldo Sanchez gave me five bucks and didn't say a damn thing. Fine 01 hey, Alex. I was looking to buy this 14 GT and it's tuned by you at Lund. <laughs> okay. Apparently it's having false knock. You check the logs and it said it's indeed false. Is it a bad buy? Car is full bolt on. If it's NA and it has um, false knock and, and if it's on E85, mm, what I would do is this. On every used car you get, every used car you get, sorry, do a, uh, do a compression check. Do a compression check. Make sure everything is good. There's no blow by. There's no ring land that's popped. If a compression if a compression check comes back fine and the plugs look good, it's probably a good buy. If he, the owner, wants to see if it's false knock or not, throw some octane booster in it, knowing that it has 100 octane. And if it still knocks on 100 octane and the compression test look good, it's probably false and we got to chase it down. Ben's Modular Mustang says, just cause. Thank you very much for the money. Osvaldo Sanchez gave me five bucks again for no reason. El Chango. Blow up the two, blow blow up the two point fusion and get beat by a Hellcat this time. Cuh. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, for the advice. I finally broke into the tens with my Tesla Model Three, but the two R eight eight eights in the back and I buy I buy two R eight eight eights in the back and kept the two stock tires in the front and bingo, no problem. He actually said pingo, no problem, but I'm trying to make him sound not retarded. It's it's a hard it's hard work. <laughs> he said bingo, no problem. Car is still kicking ass on this flex field tune. Even stronger on the 85R tune. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Matthew Goodall, are you sure? Because we swear, customers swear that the flex field tune is faster than the E85R tune. Um, <clears throat> long tube headers in the mail. Remember, you're mentioning that no tuner vision required for this install. Just confirming. Correct, Matthew Goodall. If you're on our calibration and you put on some long tube headers, you don't need a revision. If you get any codes or you want to just bring in logs for peace of mind, we'll go ahead and do that. David Jaffrey says, what's your personal preference? Driving from point to point would take a longer route or haul ass to take a shorter route and drive chill. Shorter route, uh, haul ass. I like to haul ass. I like to get there. I don't like to like cruise. I want to just get there quickly, efficiently. Trevor Bryan said, hey, Alex, how much horsepower can a Gen 1 Paxton Coyote handle safely with MMROPGs and crank sprocket? It doesn't matter about the crank sprocket. It's the rods that are the issue. So in my opinion, keep it, if it's E85 and return system, keep it under 720 or so rear wheel horsepower. It's a weird number, but that seems to be the safe zone. Safe in quotation marks. Alex, what are your thoughts on LPF twin turbo kit on a 19 auto? Look, I know there's a huge beef with LPF and a couple shops in Houston. I personally do not know uh, how LPF kits perform. Other guys at Lund Racing might, but I personally have only tuned on three stuff, I not a lot of LPF stuff comes across my 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 screen. Not because it's not popular, but maybe the guy at LPF tunes them himself and he gets them out the door and they're rolling out. But not, we just we just don't see a lot of LPF stuff come through Lund Racing, honestly. 
Arturo Edmoyiso, which Edmoyiso means he's gorgeous. That's his Spanish name for Edmoyiso. He said, what's that, bitch? Gave me two bucks. Osvaldo Sanchez gave me 10 more dollars and said, have you ever done a review on the twin turbo S197? Yes. Uh, if I want you to, if I want you to review mines, uh, someone's work, Christian's working on it. Um, probably not. No offense, um, but I, I'm not going to review any cars because it has to be some badass stuff, like badass stuff, like insanity. A 650 to 700, maybe 800 horsepower twin turbo car. It's just, it's just not something I want to review because every everyone and their mom, Adam LZ and the dude in blue and Mustang Lifestyle and all those guys have done that shit, and I'm not going to give you anything that's that's worthwhile because that's just not my wheelhouse i'll say oh yeah it runs pretty good oh look it, it's fast i'm not gonna give you the whoa i'm not gonna give you that shit i'm gonna be like eh, you know I, so i'd probably be the 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 worst guy to review your car osvaldo no offense it's just not my wheelhouse <clears throat> 16 shelby or 15 hellcat and why 15 hellcat 15 hellcat with uh, e85 uh pulley upgrade and you call uh, Ripa tuned because <laughs> that's the I see them everywhere. You call Ripa tuned for get one of those incognito pulleys and E85 and uh, and uh, and I'm telling you, those are nine second cars without a problem, comfortable, wide, big. So Ripa tuned incognito pulley E85. <laughs> Shelby is like cool, but if you want to road race it and shit and you put a Whipple on it, but then what? Then what? How many <clears throat> Whipple? supercharged gt350s are running badass numbers out there not many most of them are twin turbo super built crazy things thoughts on octane booster for 91 uh octane guys is it bad on the stock fuel pump and injectors running it with my vortex blower got a link code and i read the octane booster can cause that i don't know where you read that wherever you read that make sure you delete that page from your browser history because that's the dumbest shit i ever heard if you're running lean it's because you have a physical fuel delivery problem or unmetered air nothing to do with an octane booster best spark the spark plug the spark you added for launch in the revision yesterday is on point time slips tomorrow if the weather holds out eric york i gave him three degrees right between 2000 and 2900 rpm the car was going down to about 11 degrees of timing out of the hole and i'm like so when i look in the in the <clears throat> in the calibration i'm like yeah at that load range at that rpm it only see this much timing he was on e85 and i'm like here here's more timing according to him it made a difference so we'll see if the time slips say so is he kovurubias holy shit what a name <clears throat> and thank you eric for the 20 dollars. i don't mean to shortchange you Alex, is there a way we can test 93 octane fuel like we like the way people test the 85? Some fuel stations might be selling chocolate milk. As far as I know, there isn't an easy way to do it like on the 85. There is a way to do it, but don't you don't you have to send it off somewhere? Isn't it an expensive process and it's time consuming? It's not like you just put you know water in a beaker and go here's the 85 and oh it's 72 oh it's 91 oh it's 87 octane. I, I just don't think there's a test like that for petroleum based fuels. That's quick and easy like the 85 i think you have to send it off somewhere the, the best way is he is honestly the knock sensors if the knock sensors are adding a shitload of timing but it's after the fact then we know it's after the fact i get it but that's the only way that i know of doing it quickly <clears throat> jeff says give me 10 bucks says hey alex sk performance wants to sponsor your podcast uh we have our new coyote and 2020 gt500 billet timing guides how can we reach you and see about a sponsorship for your kick-ass channel hey sk performance right here <clears throat> i'm gonna put my email and i'm sure you guys are gonna probably spam me so ydbt for life at gmail.com ydbt for life at gmail.com right there i put it in the chat ydbt for life at gmail.com say your sk performance i'll have to verify who the hell you are a lot of you guys a lot of you guys are gonna send me dick pics i get it but that's the part of being famous you get dick pics not famous um known how much boost can a Gen 2 really hold with head studs, proper fuel, turbo cartoon by Dakota? I want to send it this year all the way. <clears throat> we had one make 1,021 horsepower the other day on a twin turbo kit. Now, on E75 or E72. Now, is that something that I, I think it's going to live a long life? Probably not. If it's stock, if it's indeed stock. Um, 
<laughs> but what I would do is keep it in the 900 and maybe the occasional thousand with head studs, proper fuel, proper everything. I just cannot guarantee it's going to live a long life. I cannot guarantee it's going to live a long life. How much boost can it handle? So, so basically 20 or so, 20 or so PSI. Well, it, depend, it depends. Is it single turbo? Is it twin turbo? It, it, I'd rather make it more a rear wheel horsepower number than a boost number. Because with catalytic converters, you can probably make 30 PSI clogged up and blow the ring lens off the bitch. Uh, Arturo Hermosillo says Turbo Fox 302 or Turbo O3 Cobra. Turbo Fox 302. All day. Sup, Alex? Any news on your blower and what gains you're going to get look on the port job? So, no, no news on the blower yet. I'm going to email. I wanted to give Edelbrock time. And they've had it, had it um, a week today. So, tomorrow, I'm just going to reach out and say, hey, how you doing? Hopefully, you guys received the blower. Uh, is there any way that I can get some kind of ETA or, you know, pro diagnosis as to what, what, what occurred? And then um, it's going to go from there to Greg Kong in Pennsylvania. He's going to port it. And then I'll put it in the car and give you a, because the best, the most it made was like 890 or 880 wheel. So if I'm anything in the 930 or 940, that's totally worth the port job. Miles Marthusen says, channel support, love the videos. Got it tuned for my 14 GT with a port charger and CJ today. Badass shit. <laughs> Crank support on the way. How much better are the IATs used on your 19 Vortec versus your Yonk race car 265? The same. So my that's why I, I made fun of Tony full bolt on because he hates on TVSs. But I'm telling you, the IATs in a high boost Coyote in the Fairmont are about the same as the 3.6 pulley equipped 19. Ambient, maybe plus minus five degrees when you're rolling. Now, if you're going to sit there idling the car forever, yeah, it's going to get hot. But I think the air to air gets hotter because it's not intercooled, whereas the, because uh, it's air to air, whereas the Fairmont is less prone to, when you're sitting at a light to see high IAT because there's an intercooler and a fan circulating water in and out of the blower through a tank and the front and the heat exchanger. Sergio says, just graduated yesterday. Can I get a graduation tune? Give me five bucks for that. Congratulations, brother. Okay, let's get to the peasant chat real quick. Um, R3 Drum, Drum Evil says, Alex, put ice on top of his blower. I mean, you can now that it's a intercooler on the top, but you have like a Roush blower or a VMP blower. Do not put ice on the rotor pack like on the case where the rotors are do not do that please <clears throat> ezekiel vasquez says if you just want a really comfortable daily driver that has lots of power and destroys lots of car stock then yeah hell pussy both are great cars different philosophies of use yeah i mean i guess people are mad that i chose the hellcat but look you're asking me uh something that you drive a lot it's gonna be a Hellcat because it's 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 comfortable it's fast and i'm gonna i'm gonna gap people the 350 is more of a car you take for, you know, occasional road racing. If you live in an area like Pennsylvania, has a lot of winding roads, that car is better suited up there. But a GT350 naturally aspirated fucking sucks. It's slow balls. It is dumb. It's quick for what it is. It's like an 11.9, car with a tune and maybe E85, <clears throat> maybe 11.7. But it's just not something that I really give a shit about in terms of, it's it, to me it's almost like a a, a a street legal road race car because it is you know i just don't want to daily drive a car that has the cool fucking brakes the badass engine that buzzes have you ever driven a gt350 go to a light and just sit there and listen that thing rattles that thing, a fucking flat plane crank making a bunch of noise and you're like do i want to drive this for more than twenty thousand miles probably not put ice on a pro charger tony bolton says i finally made it to one of these things Live race car guy says, Great stuff, Alex. Uh, Yonce 50 says, What did I miss about nitrous talking shit? And you're gonna have to tune into the beginning, I'm not gonna mention it the whole way. <clears throat> now, I wanted to talk about list racing. Are you guys part of any forum that has their own specific list? And it is like the micro record list, the quickest and fastest blower, the quickest and fastest 6R80, the quickest and fastest NA. This, that, 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 that. And they have like an Excel, quickest and fastest S550, quickest and fastest overall Coyote, overall 6R80, 4R200, this and this and that. You know what I find peculiar about those lists is, is the similar thought process as people are putting into the draggy setup. If you do not know what a draggy setup or draggy um, <clears throat> device is, look it up. I'm not going to explain it to you. 
I've now started to see people do draggy racing similar to how they do list racing. So let's say I'm number one on the naturally aspirated 3,800 pound red <laughs> Mustang list. Let's say I'm number one and let's say the car's running 11.5. And the number two guy is 12.3. Is people are now saying, well, I'm not going to race you. You're a full seven tenths behind me. I want to race someone that's at least close. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. When did we start when did we start saying no to races based on a glory pass or based on a list number as opposed to let's just fucking race. And if you spin, you lose. You know, it's the luck of the draw. If 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 list racing was the only way to race, nobody would ever go to a drag strip and race somebody or grudge racing wouldn't even exist. So it is pretty funny when you see list racers post up list list their, their, their ET and never race. Like they never show up to a mod nationals. They never show up to an NMRA race. They never grudge race. You never see them calling out the number two guy and saying, hey, you and I number two and one, one and two. Would you want to race? You never see that. I'd love to see that. I'd love to make that list, right? Let's say take the top 10. And do a, a buy-in and do the winner takes all. And I'm not winner takes all, but winner, you know, first and second. Everyone else can suck a dick. I hate that quarterfinal shit. Now, first and second. And you split the pot up there. I've never seen anyone do that on these lists. They say, well, I'm number one on the list. And then they keep striving to be number one on the list. Not to race the guy. Not to say, I want to race you. Hey, you're number two. You want to race sometime? Friendly, not beefy shit, not, not dumb shit. Do you want to race? No, you never hear that shit. And then when you meet certain criteria for that list, and then one thing is off that the list doesn't agree with, namely the 4R200 hub. The 4R200 hub literally threw a wrench into everyone's bullshit because now they're saying, well, wait a minute. It is not a 6R80 anymore. I'm like, it isn't? It doesn't say 6R80 on the case. It doesn't get a 6R80 converter. It doesn't get 6R80 clutch packs. It doesn't get intermediate shafts meant for a 6R80. It get, the only difference is a hub that re-gears the gear ratio. It, it resets the gear ratio to, to more like a Turbo 400 style gear ratio. And people go, that's stupid. It, I'd rather launch on a 417 first. Meanwhile, they have 29 inch tires and a 305 rear end, which is basically what the 4R200 hub does. Here you go, and it re-gears the vehicle. It is funny that people play the gear ratio game with tires and rear gears, but the moment you can, you have to do it with the trans, or you're smart enough to do it with the trans, that's when they go, that's stupid. But the only people that say that's stupid is the people that cannot tune the 4R200. Plain and simple, I don't care what anyone says. If anyone that can actually tune the 4R200 hub sees its benefits, and then says it's stupid, find me that person. Find me that person. Find me that person. Where they're like, oh, a 260 or 250 first gear ratio sucks on a 1300 horsepower car? Then why the hell does the Turbo 400 exist? Why is the Turbo 400 so desirable? If it has a similar gear ratio than a 4R200 hub, you don't have to change your drive shaft, your cross member, or your converter. You just change a hub. If you still say no to that, you can't tune it. Plain and simple. <clears throat> Rupier says, how do Alex want to go free flowing exhaust but keep having issues with inspections? Any advice on to avoid this type of problem? I think they're having O2 problems. My rear O2 are disabled. I don't think we're tuning you. We don't disable any sensors. We are EPA compliant. So whoever your tuner is, you got to tell them, hey man, uh, make sure my tune is everything on and I got to install cats in the sucker because you live in a, an emissions state. Plain and simple. You live in an emission state. You got to go by their laws. You can't just roll in there without cats and expect your tuner to bail you out of that situation. That is fucked up. Now, I'm not saying you're doing that, but that's a fucked up way of thinking. Hey, tuner, bail me out of this situation. Hey, customer, you live in an emission state. Put cats in the thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. YDBT for life. YDBT for life at gmail.com. Thank you. <laughs> Osis Coyote says, I think you left out the L on your Gmail. So YDBT for life uh, at gmail.com. Zeal One or One LE or GT500? GT500. GT500. Now, the new Zeal One One LE is pretty nasty. It, it looks good. 
It's got a TR6060 or the 10R80, I think. And it's it's good looking and it's light and it's got beautiful brakes. But out of those two, meaning like the 2020 version, I would do the GT500 for sure. It's made 1100 wheel or 1050 wheel with our, you know, the, the, the villain, the quickest and fastest, by the way, the quickest and fastest 2020 GT500 talking about list races, um, is lethal. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's lethal. It's, uh, it's, uh, Evo's. Okay. Evo's car is the quickest and fastest GT500 by like, by like a half second or more. So it's, you know, it's just the truth. <clears throat> My car cuts out of throttle when I'm at watt. Pulls smooth until fifth gear, then nose dives around 120 miles an hour. 16 GT Vortec JTB, 16 pounds waist gated. <laughs> Fucking waist gated. 355s, dual Ford 65 fuel system, ID 250X, and a 6R80. So if it's on the 4 5 shift, I think I know what's happening. But it says we'll pull smooth until fifth gear, then nose dives. I think it doesn't double up shift. Um, MD5 slow. So a lot of cars, S550, they go what? And then it goes four, five, six. It goes, boom, boom, boom. it does like a double upshift, even if you're paddle moding it. We have a fix for that, um, MD5 slow. If you're tuned by us, if you are tuned by us, request someone to tell you, hey, I, my car's nose diving after fourth gear and it double upshifts and it nose dives and get us a log of that and then we'll fix it in a tune. Haik Boyadan says, dumb question, but your thoughts on a street build digger rolls? Front 205 4017, rear 295 50 15s. By the way, you were right on the UPR stuff. Got it all installed. It's awesome. I mean, guys, you, come on. I have, I don't say shit out of talking out of my ass. I, I, I'd like to think that I have halfway decent information based on experience. If I don't have experience on it, I don't talk on it. Um, uh, depends on the prep, really, right? 295 50 15, that's a beefy tire. That'll work. Um, why not like a Hoosier bias ply though? A lot of the street car guys that do dig stuff, they do the Hoosier bias ply. If you're like a roll guy and a dig guy, then you're gonna have to stick with a drag radial so that you're stable and you're not potentially, you know, switching lanes with the rear. So that sounds like a good setup right there. Honestly, that sounds like a big tire. I, I like a big tire on the street all the time. My car never ran better. The black car, this guy, let's see, where is it? I think I saw a picture of it. Yeah, this car right here. Paul Monaco had it for a millisecond. That sucker right there with the Mickey Thompson ET, ET drags, boy, that's like, um, I don't know, uh, 12 PSI. Stiff wall slick, 12 PSI, 6,000 RPM launch. One Best 60 foot was only like a 140. I never got it, and then I broke the rear end. <clears throat> Pedro Alvarado. Oh, sorry. David Jeffrey. What are your thoughts on a perfectly executed LL swap stick Miata and a Rolls Racist with stick Mustang? Who would win? A st uh, Miata. I mean, a Miata. If it's a perfectly executed LS swap, meaning badass like a LS3 or a 5.3 or a 4.8 4. with boost, cam, heads, making about 400 wheel, and the car weighs nothing, it's going to steamroll. It's going to steamroll. A Mustang. Sorry, I'm a Mustang guy, but I'm not fucking stupid. A Miata, a go kart with 350 to 400 wheel versus a 3,500 pound, 3,600 pound Mustang with 400 wheel, 450 wheel, even 500 wheel. I got my money in the Miata. I'm not stupid. Jeff Witch says S550 Paxson with a 2200 and a Boss intake. Free flowing exhaust, the 85 on a long tune. I'm on bar am I on borrowed time with the 348? What about going to 33? If you're on a return style system, S550, Paxson 2200, I'd stick a 3.3 in it if it was me, <laughs> make 800 wheel. You know, right now my car makes 700 something wheel on pump gas. If I had E85, I'd stick a 3.3 in it tomorrow. I mean, I probably wouldn't do it on my daily, but if I want to, if, if I want to daily on 800 wheel, fuck yeah, stick a 3.3 in it all day. And he says, thank you for the track setup today. Oh, he was the guy that was asking about, um, he was the guy that was asking a lot about suspension setups. I told him about spring. We told him about compression and rebound. And we told him about sway bar stuff with his car. Very cool email. And we had a nice little exchange. And that's what you do. You come to us based on our experience, what we think works. And hopefully it works for you. But I, I do the 3-3, brother, because you need, you need help getting out of that hole anyway. <clears throat> Wesley Frazier Wesley Frazier says 19 GT Edelbrock with a 2650 on E85 with a return style and 1050 X's about 12 PSI Seth White auxiliary idler for the win Seth White you're getting some props on this show good for you bro <clears throat> sorry my my voice is my vocal cords are weak <laughs> how much more boost can I run with stock cats 
dude, you're done. You're done right now. You're done right now. I, I'm not a big fan of boosting cats. Even GT500s, new 2020 GT500s, needed all the cat over temp protection on the planet to keep those things cool, and that thing stink like burnt catalytic converter in factory form. I'd get them out of there or get a free flowing exhaust as soon as possible, sir. Long tubes, I do long tubes and free flowing exhaust before a bigger throttle, sir. Um, just Smallwood, sorry about your name. Whew. What a name. Could you imagine? You're in high school or me or this show and your name is your name is Jeffrey Smallwood. Uh, <clears throat> fast roll race NA 10 R80 cars deserve recognition. Long cars sing very well up top. <sighs> I don't know. I think that's so weird to me to, to have like I get, I get it. NA is 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 great because it, there's a limiting factor, right? A lot of NA racers love that limiting factor and love getting absolutely everything out of a Mustang that has no power mods, meaning no boost, and it is fully bolted on. I just, I just don't care, man. I just, I, I I'm sorry to hate that. I'm sorry, to, sorry to say that. I just don't, I just don't, just don't care. You know, it's like, it's cool, but, but then what? Like that. Th then a guy with a Vortec base kit on pump gas and a big pulley steamrolls you while you have 6,000 in mods on your car. He's got 5,800. <laughs> and he's like, yep, you know? So I want to go fast and I don't want anything limiting me. Now, if this thing ends up being an NA car, I'm just doing it just to do NA stuff. Luckily, I have other cars that are fast and scratch that itch. But the moment this thing goes like 10s NA, I'm probably going to do nitrous or turbo. Speaking of which, I got these. If, remember last week I was talking about, or two weeks ago, I was talking about the Holly turbo headers. Check these out. They came in. Oh. Look at these. Look at these things. So these are um, Holly's version of turbo headers with a nice little deal back there look at that guys these these were less than 320 bucks for for the set from holly sure they're probably china and full of covid 320 bucks if you go to cg fab you're probably going to spend 1500 bucks for hot side stuff this was 329 dollars <laughs> and it looks like it's made pretty damn well just giving you a heads up. Go to the Holly site. Three hundred twenty bucks if you want to eventually build your own little single turbo or twin turbo kit. That that seems to be a nice little option if you ever want to do that. <clears throat> Everyone's like boosted nitrous. I like boosted nitrous. Um, the Black Bean, which is uh, Lund Racing's Whipple supercharged twenty eighteen Mustang, had a nice seventy five dry shot in it uh, a couple times and it fucking loved it. It was like fuck yeah. It absolutely loved it. <clears throat> Big Stewie, 1686, says, I ordered my tune today. If I happen to drop an elevation, road trip or vacation, do I need to pay for a revision and swap the, the pulley? 2-3 Roush, 1050X, 76-millimeter pulley. What I would do is get tuned on a 76-millimeter pulley, right? And then when you drop an elevation, meaning when you go into the valley somewhere, put a bigger pulley on it, an 82 or a 79-millimeter, and the car will do fine. That's what I would do. And you do not need a retune after that. Pedro Alvarado says, hey, Alex, Roush phase one, okay on 2012 Coyote without oil pump gears and sprocket. Muchas gracias, loco. It depends on boost level. And the Roush phase one doesn't flow that well. You need an elbow. You need a, the, the phase, the, 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 the state, the Gen 2 Roush blower that came on 15 and up Mustangs was very good. It had a bigger elbow, bigger inlet, um, and it made more power. But the, the phase one with an elbow upgrade and like 82 millimeter pulley was great. It was fine. Um, I think you'll be you'll be fine. You don't need oil pump gears. I never had oil pump gears in my Coyote, but it's a good idea to to do them because if you ever smash the limiter or if you have a lot of miles on your car, the last thing you want to do is have an oil pump gear failure. When that's something you could buy from Ford Performance. Ford Performance crank sprockets are like 50 bucks. <laughs> 50 bucks. Unreal. Um, SoCal Bronco says. Getting a Steeda cold air intake on my manual 19 GT. Can you tune it without the insert? No. Dude, put the insert in. Idle quality suffers greatly with that intake and the insert out. It suffers greatly. 
leave the insert in your Steeda cold air intake. It's still 120 millimeter with the insert in. Please leave it, leave it in. Also, your thoughts on a bullet throttle body. Complete waste of time. Complete waste of time. 2018 and up Mustangs have gone tens on the stock throttle body. A complete waste of time and money. Um, he also says, with a Blowfish Racing Bracket Adapter and a ported Brett Barber Manifold. Port the manifold if you want. Leave the stock throttle body in it. Do not port the throttle body. God damn it. Don't fucking dare port the throttle body. But port the manifold all you want. And keep the stock throttle body. Keep the insert in the seat of cold air intake. Trust me. Trust me. I've only done 500 of these. Please leave the insert in that guy. Do you see a noticeable difference on a boosted setup between a Catalyst and long tubes? Of course. What are you kidding me? Like 40 horse. Like, like, like depending on boost level, like 40 horsepower. My, <clears throat> my Vortex Supercharged Mustang went from 660 wheel to 700 wheel. When I put long tube headers and free flowing exhaust. Also, would you rather tune a Calamar Stage 3 MT82 or a T56? Either or. T56 if you're going to party. MT82 if you want to save money and still have a pretty damn badass high RPM transmission. Jeff Witch gave me 20 bucks. Says, do I need a revision to the tune on a 3.3 pulley? Jeff, it's a good idea to have us look at logs. So make sure you're within your time period because we did raise prices on your... Um, revision time it used to be three months 50 revision 50 dollars now it's six months we doubled it but we raised the price 150 bucks so now 150 bucks covers you for th for six months if you're already tuned by lund racing <clears throat> when are people going to start going to stop asking about the throttle body upgrades on any coyote see the problem is this and i don't want to talk about this that much because a lot of people think i'm mad at people that port throttle bodies i'm not mad at people that port throttle bodies I think they just got to get it through their head that it's a waste of time. It's a way. I know it's probably a money maker if you're the port you guy doing the porting and you're probably pissed off because you're like I got a bunch of them sitting here and they're not selling because you're saying they're they're useless. Well, guess what? I'm really sorry. There is no Santa Claus. There's no Santa Claus. I'm sorry. Santa Claus doesn't exist. The moment you take apart a throttle body, you take it apart to port port it right. You fucking gut it, port it, right? Do your thing. Is the blade bigger? Is the, is the blade bigger? Did the blade somehow grow? No. The blade's the same size, right? Did the opening around the blade grow? If it did, it's probably going to fail safe. It's probably going to idle high. It's probably going to hang up. Then you have to reassemble everything and hope you reassembled everything right and then ship it to your customer. Customer puts it in his car. It should not need tune changes. Guys, BBK 85 millimeter throttle bodies need no tune changes and most of them work okay. And then just go and probably not going to drive that good, but they idle and they don't fail safe. If you ported your throttle body, someone took it apart, hogged it out, and now it's idling higher or idling funky, it is not the tune. And it is not up to the tuner to try to make that work. Are we going to guess as to how much more air is getting in there at idle? Are we going to guess as to if there's a gear stuck or if you put something together wrong or if you put the shaft in crooked or didn't lubricate certain things, are we going to just sit there and just hammer away on a stock throttle body that's been ported and it's not acting as it should? No, we're not. We're going to say, hey, uh, your throttle's getting stuck. Oh yeah, I ported it. Okay, well, get it out of my face and put a stock one in it. But I I don't care. I'm not going to sit here 40 revisions in on, a, on something that is not tune related. Oh, but the tuner should be able to adjust. Okay. If you port throttle bodies and you're willing to tell me what needs to change because injector dynamics, FIC, Ford Racing has injector data. So when they give us data, okay, we put it in the tune and it works. So if you give us throttle body data that changes because of a port job, I'd be happy to take a look at that sheet, plop it into anything that makes sense and see if it makes a difference. It doesn't, right? And you don't have that ability, right? Because if there is a different way the car is driving, something is wrong with that part. I'm not saying all throttle bodies that are ported are bad. I've had many ported throttle bodies that have had no issues. But I've had more throttle bodies that have had issues after porting because they've been disassembled, ported, and then reassembled. There you go. <clears throat> and I'm sure some guy's pissed off at me right now. But I'm my job, my job, to take care of the customer. Plain and simple. And the car. 
I don't care about selling parts. I don't give a shit. If you're like, Alex, I need to go 10s and A, I'll give you a list that will work. If you, for whatever reason, want to be Punky Brewster and be fucking totally different, that's on you. And she had her growing pains and so will you. So <laughs> we're just not going to make this journey together. That's all. <clears throat> for those old motherfuckers who knows Punky Brewster is. By the way, she grew up to have the biggest fucking rack. Oh my God. Do you remember Punky Brewster? What was her name? What was Punky Brewster's name? We just got on a tangent. Brewster. Punky Brewster, right? Punky Brewster was a cute little chick, had a little show back in the fucking 80s, back in the long, long time ago. This, you know, this was Punky Brewster, right? You know, you remember Punky Brewster, you know, cute little girl had the show. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Then she grew up to be this woman that had the most massive tits you've ever seen. Um, what's her name? <laughs> what is her, what's her actual name? Soleil Moonfry or something? Moonfry. Boobs. <laughs> Oh, shit. She had, oh my God, look at this picture, guys. Look at this, right here. Look it, that's what she grew up to be like. Porn star boobs. And then she had them cut off. Look at, oh my, oh my God. She was on an episode of The Wonder Years as like a 15-year-old, unreal. Like, uh, look, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take a detour because fuck it. Um, so Leo Moon Fry. Moon Fry. <laughs> the Wonder Years. She did. And I was like, wait, is that Punky Brewster? Because I was a kid when she was growing up. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> when they introduced her on, on that show, they introduced her as a girl that had just massive boobs. Where is she? It's, no, it's not. That's not Soleil Moon Fry. God damn it. There was a scene where she was walking in and her boobs were just flopping all over the place. Anyway, look it up. The Wonder Years, Soleil Moon Fry. Hopefully that'll be enough for you guys to be entertained for a little while. <clears throat> I like how I get off on a tangent. Uh, do I need a revision on 3-3 Pulley? I already asked a question. Can you sprinkle in some Tatquache National in stream? I found it hysterical last week and you put Suave Mete for background music for commentary. Suave Mete? The problem is, or does it mean Suave Mente? The problem with putting Mexican music on, they demonetized it. They demonetized my video because who knew Mexicans had actual legal legal uh, authority for their music? <laughs> like that many people listen to your shit? Apparently so. So I cannot play a song on the stream and keep the monetization. And I want to keep my money. Do you know what I am saying? When are you having Mike Hawk and E. Norma Stitz back on the show? I don't even know who the hell you just said. I don't know what the fuck. Mike, Mike Hawk and e norma i think he's trying to make a like a like enormous tits like enormous tits he just did it so bad like so bad fernando fernando that's really bad mike hawk you should have said mike o-c-k like mike hawk like mike hawk and enormous tits you're like mike hawk and e norma stits awful 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 keep your day job <clears throat> Show us those headers on the Holly site, please. Searching now, can't find them. Thanks for showing, man. Hope all is well in Yodi School for the win. Okay, just, so this is, again, this is the issue we have with customers. Holly, Coyote, headers, Google, and guess what? They're going to be right there. Look at me. Look at me. Holly, Coyote, headers, boom. I mean, really, guys? Really, guys? $275 fucking dollars, guys. Again, teaching you how to Google one day at a time. Very easy. Alex, I've heard that the VP Fuel website, that Octanium is not safe for O2 sensors. I've been running it in my 14 nitrous car, no issues, thoughts on it. I think if it's a prolonged use, if you see VP Octanium and Torco, they kind of have a tint to them. And they might, like they do to the, the, the spark plugs, they might actually, they might actually, um, change the, the, the spark plug color like Torco makes your spark plug orange so i'm sure in time if you use it a lot it'll kind of mess up the o2 because of that coating or the byproduct of the combustion procedure with the octanium it just kind of throws a tint on there so i think they're just throw, throwing a disclaimer out there so you don't run it all the time ej says anyone can copy claim music to anyone can claim copyright to music you use on youtube that sucks <clears throat> we want to hear your gary Vaynerchuk impression Gary, oh, Gary V, 
Gary V. So Gary V is the biggest fraud in Facebook. And if he comes after me, fuck it. He he has a great ability for those um, gullible people that are do nothings. No offense. To believe is bullshit. Gary V does not give you a roadmap to do anything. Gary V goes, "Hey, you know, you gotta just stop, stop being a victim, and just go out there and just like fucking." And he says, "Fuck shit, motherfucker." And you're like, "Yeah," you know. You're like, "You, you gotta go out there and fucking just take the world by storm," you know, because Snapchat and Facebook and YouTube is basically like NBC, ABC, and 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 you know, like like uh, news stations, and you gotta use that to your advantage and go out there and do things and do stuff. Fuck, cunt, motherfucker. And I'm like, I don't know. He didn't say anything. But then there's some guy in Ohio that's like, that guy's that guy's on the money. I'm gonna go out there and do stuff. He goes out there, opens his door. I'm gonna do stuff today. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Gary V is a snake oil salesman who goes out there and fills your head up with positivity and you're like, yeah, yeah, and you watch his videos because he motivates you, but then what? Then you're like, okay, like, what do I do, Gary? Like, how do I, what do I, huh, what? Like, like do I invest in stocks? Do I take your classes and you actually tell me and there's, there's like, you know, you can, you can point me in the right direction? No, he's like, he's a motivational speaker. So that's what he does. He should not be like a business be seen as a business guy he has made a lot of money going to companies telling them to use social media as as a as a tool to to promote their business but then he uses that same social media to take simple people to watch his shit and you guys are like yeah gary v gary v says absolutely nothing <clears throat> what do you think about running meth injection on a tvs uh good as long as you um can regulate the amount of meth if you can get it as close to the combustion chamber as possible that'd be great but if you're going to run it through the cold air it's going to go through the rotors down the intercooler then back up then back down into the combustion chamber so the effectiveness the further away it is from the combustion chamber is lessened hypothetical based on the adaptive octane logic is there a potential to see more power na gen 3 while running 116 on 93 tune versus e85 r tune yeah if you if you if you tell us, I want to run 116, well, we'll raise the cap. We'll go, we'll raise the cap using ad ad you know, adaptive octane logic. So on a stock Gen 3, though, it'll see more timing. Let's say a stock calibration, Gen 3. You put, get, you put race gas in it, it's going to make more power. If you're aftermarket tune, like, like on a Lunt tune, and you're putting it up against an E85R tune, guys, that is, a, that is a very good point. I should take this Mustang put pump gas in it, an additive, and go watt and see how much power it makes. 93 in an additive. Drain the tank, put 116 octane or some badass race fuel that is 14-0 stoic, tune it for that, same timing, lock the timing so the timing's the same, go watt, see what it does. Then on an E85R tune with E85 in the tank, lock the timing and see what it makes. That'd be a, a whole day, but I think it'd be an interesting test. Three Valve Eric says, Gary V is yes, man. Um, Garrett L says, not a huge fan of my current dyno tune. If I go with the Lund tune, I don't have the option to go back to OEM. Is that an issue for Lund to tune? S550 with a Paxson kit. What do you mean, OEM tune? <clears throat> what do you mean the OEM tune, Garrett? If you, if you want like a bone stock tune for your car, we can send you a bone stock tune. Meaning, if it's a 2015 manual non-performance pack... We can send you a 15 manual non-performance pack tune. You can flash whenever the hell you want. I don't know why you would because you're supercharged now. So why would you want to go back to stock unless you're planning to sell the car? <laughs> David Jaffrey, what are your thoughts on Leonardo DiCaprio? I want to live his life. The guy's a good looking guy, great actor, and he fucks everything. I wonder if he's happy though. You know, do you ever get to that point? I don't. But I wonder if you ever get to that point where you're just, you can fuck anything you want. You have all the money on the planet. You're great looking. You know, like Brad Pitt used to be. Brad Pitt looking old, which is great for us all ugly guys because we're like, finally, he's one of us, except he's rich. So I wonder what it's like to be Leonardo DiCaprio. Great actor. Been in some awesome movies. I still watch Inception. I've watched Inception probably 50 times. 
I've watched King of Wall Street, Wolf of Wall Street, probably fucking 20 times. It's, and I watched Gangs of New York like 30 times, The Dead Rabbits. Very <laughs> great actor. I wish I had his life. He's a great guy from what I can tell in terms of the public persona. I don't know him personally, obviously. Who the fuck am I? <clears throat> but the guy seems to be living the perfect life. Gary Vee is for people that lack confidence. Solo Mag, you're 100% right. If you go... Huh, okay, so uña de gato. What is uña de gato? I'm going to tell you what uña de gato is. Uña de gato. I'm Hispanic, so I know. <clears throat> so, cat's claw. Cat's claw. What the hell is that name? What number? Okay. So, cat's claw is... What is cat's claw? Cat's claw is a plant. Two species of cat's claw. Uncaria tomatosa and Uncaria guinea, whatever. Primary interest of use of medicine. Hispanics thought cat's claw was actually a cat's claw. See, so they were, <laughs> so they were gullible as shit from the get-go. If you go to like a bodega, I guarantee they have holy water in a can or in a, in a, in a, in a bottle. And I've seen people, Hispanics, go in there and take this holy water and be like, oh, let me get this holy water for three bucks. And the guy in the bodega is like, <laughs> I just made three wa- I just made three dollars on tap water, Bronx, New York tap water. There are gullible people everywhere. In my opinion, Gary Vee is not dangerous, but he doesn't tell you anything. He doesn't, not for free, and maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's saying, I know so much stuff that you need to pay me for the information, similar to what I'm doing. But honestly, I think Gary Vee, what he puts out there on Facebook and stuff, is fine if you know it's entertainment. I look at him, he's entertaining, he's just funny as shit, but he doesn't tell you anything, he doesn't give you any information, doesn't do shit. <clears throat> Gary Vee is, okay, uh, hey YOLO, why is MMR, so, okay, this is what Brian Bertermatty Ber, Bert says. Hey YOLO, why is MMR such a garbage? Look, a lot of people don't have a positive spin on MMR. I get it. Um, I can't really speak by experience, right? Because I, I, I haven't had bad dealings. With, I haven't had any dealings with them. I've never bought a motor from them. I've never bought a part from them. But a lot of people that I know run a lot of their parts. Their cam chain guides, their uh, cam caps, they, they're like the ones that make parts that no one else really makes. You know, like certain parts you kind of have to buy because only they make it. Uh, when it comes to their motor program, I don't have any experience with that either. So I, I've heard the rumors and I've seen all the bullshit they've been talking online. But honestly, I cannot speak on something I have no experience over. So Cal Bronco says, regarding my earlier question, I was wondering if a bullet throttle body would be beneficial since down the road, I'm going to go Vortec JTB 3.6 pulley in a four fuel system. Okay, on a forced air induction setup, it might make a little bit of a difference for sure. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to do it for that reason, it's going to be a pain in the ass to tune. So we got to know that going, going forward. Not a pain in the ass like it's impossible, but it's basically a GT. Guys, the bullet throttle body is a GT350 throttle body. That's all it is. Um, Dave Daly says, I'd like to have you tune in. He goes, hey, bud, I have a fairly heavy modded street staying. If it's already modded and you didn't talk to us and you didn't hit us up on anything, be ready to change parts. Dave, be ready to change parts. If I'm like, nope, those cams are shit, that intake is shit, that throttle body shit, that cold air is shit, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at us. We will want to configure the way we want to tune it. Plain and simple. That's that's just how it is. My <clears throat> my my thoughts, and again, you're not saying this, Dave. I'm just it just, you know, reminded me of something. If the restaurant industry was like the tuning industry, it would be hilarious. It would be fucking hilarious. Let's say you go to a steak place, Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Boom, you park your ass up there and you're like, <clears throat> I would like a Big Mac with cheese, French fries. Uh, McFlurry and a Diet Coke. Ruth Chris is going to go, get the fuck out of my building. And they're like, wait a minute. I like the Big Mac. I like how the Big Mac tastes. I'm used to the Big Mac and fries. Why cannot? Why can I not have a Big Mac at Ruth Chris? They're going to kick you out of their shit. Imagine you go to Ruth Chris Steakhouse and you eat the steak. You pay for the steak. You eat it. You shit it out. Then you call them about a day later and you go, you know, 
I'm really not satisfied with that steak after thinking about it. It kind of sat in my stomach. Okay. But it wasn't any better than Texas Roadhouse. I would like my money back. I already ate it. I shit it out. I flushed it. It's been processed at the, at the plant. It's already mulch. <laughs> I need my money back. Imagine going to Burger King and saying, you know, I like your double Whopper, but can you make it taste a little bit like the Wendy's double? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my restaurant. That's what they do in the tuning industry. Customers ask for refunds after the tune's in their car and a week later and they they have a vacuum leak or something and they're like, I want my money back. I'm like, okay, how am I going to get a digital file back? Hey, Alex, I want pop, burbles, and crackles. I don't do that. Well, this guy does it. Cool. Go to him. <clears throat> how do you plan to tune the EV Mustangs? That's going to be interesting. Um, where well, there's a will, there's a way. It's an electric motor, it has a control system. You just have to be able to get in there and get access to the control system to modify it. No different than a gasoline-based Mustang. Which car is more suitable, quarter or half-mile car? Half-mile car. David Jeffrey. T. Helpler says, Sir, I watched your video on Octane Adaptive Learning. Do the major tuners factor that in that logic with their tunes? I don't know. <clears throat> I, can't, I cannot speak for other tuners. I can only speak for what Lund Racing does. Some tuners say, no, I'm going to lock the timing at this and this is what it's going to be. And you got to run 93 or race gas. So I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. We do that so that we don't have to go back and modify the tune 15,000 times. Oh, shit. There's only 91 octane available in my area. What's going to happen? Do I have to need a, do I need a new tune for 91? No, just put 91 in it. The car will make a little less power, but it'll adapt. Oh, but, but I used to have a tune that was 91 and 93 octane. And now... <laughs> Now, I'm going on a road trip, and I'd like to put 89 octane. I'd like to put 87 octane with an octane booster. Is that cool? Huh? Mm -hmm. I'd like to run 87 octane. I'm not going to go wad at all. I'm like, no, you got an aftermarket tune. You might want to run 91 to 93, but I want an 87 tune. I bought this car about a week ago. I don't want to. Dave Daly. <clears throat> Dave Daly? You don't want to change parts? Okay, so let me know. What's in the parts? Not here, but hit us up in the hit us up in the ticket system. Dave Daly says, but the car doesn't run the way it should. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, Dave Daly. Dave Daly, what what should it run? Because a lot of people do this. It's got twin turbos, got a six R eighty, it's got a converter. It should run eights. Mm, no, mm, no. And if you're not willing to change parts, because let's say if I spot a part that doesn't work. And if you're not willing to change that part, we're probably not going to work well together, Dave. Love you, but I, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't want to waste your time and my time, namely my time. <laughs> RS3 for me. I love one those names that rolls off the tongue, like YouTube Crow Panther Free Speech, Tony Bolton, RS3 for me, Cuban Coyote, um, Osis Coyote, um, Jeremiah Camp. Those guys just roll off the tongue. Channel support, Man of War, gave me money. Awesome. Wasted Wages says, don't buy anything balanced from... Okay, Wasted Wages says this, not me. Don't buy anything balanced from MMR. Too many times I've bought short blocks, long blocks that shook like hell, rebalance afterwards, smooth as butter. Good stuff, but their balancing suck. Okay, that's his experience. Sorry you had that experience, sir. <clears throat> um, Dave Daly says, he has a 5 volt MMR motor, joke report blower, fuel system, nitrous, alky control, water meth, circle D. Yep, you basically named a whole bunch of shit I don't want to fuck with. I mean, ni nitrous, Alky Control, Water Math, Circle D. Dave Daly, I don't like any of that shit. You should, you should do this. 5.0 motor, Joker port blower, fuel system for E85, and that's it. Get an ice tank if you want the uh, if you want if you want the IATs to be low. He's got nitrous and alky control water meth. I mean, those two are redundant, are they? Aren't they? Like, why don't you just use a 50 shot as a cooling or and the alky control water meth? What's that for if you have a fuel system? What's that for if you have a fuel system? Cooling? Why don't you just get an ice tank? Oh, I don't want to run an ice tank. It's a street car. <laughs> I'm willing. The car is super surgy. Okay, Dave. Look, Dave, um, hit us up in the support at lundracing.com. Put that stuff in there. But the Alki and Nitrous, I'm going to be honest with you, Dave. I've never tuned a car with Nitrous and water meth. Just, 
I know there's tuners out there. What's wrong with that? I could do then fucking you do it. You do it. Hit him up. Hit up Dave. You do it. <laughs> we got enough we got enough cars to tune to be like complicating life as to why one one thing won't work and the other. So you're spraying nitrous and water. So what happens? <laughs> so you're like, I got a blower over here. And I got nitrous fuel water meth. <laughs> the fuck oh it's fine it's fine it's fine um you sounded like the godfather from the ghetto <laughs> gen 2 r kit on 1150 can i make 650 wheel on 93 with an 82 millimeter pulley and conservative timing with a bap and me52s or do i need a 79 millimeter pulley quick 281 you need a 79 millimeter pulley sir and not conservative timing you need about 17 degrees in good sweet 93 and um sea level air RSP for me. Skipped right over my question while I was rolling off your tongue. Oh, sorry about that, brother. Hey, Alex as well. Thoughts on the 86 Mercury Capri 5.0? Like or dislike? Thinking of getting one to Coyote Swap. Love, love, love the RS. The, the Mercury Capri 5.0 RS. Uh, so, RS. It's a nice little car. It's cool. It's got cool ground effects. Was this my old car? Holy shit. It looks like my old car. Uh, like this guy right here. That, that's a cool little car. I know you guys going to think it's stupid and it's gay, but I, I, I like it. I like how it looks. Um, I'm a big fan for the 86. This is an 86 right here, I believe. And this says a 79. Uh, it might be a 79. The bubble hatch was shit, but in 79, it didn't have a bubble hatch. But a lot of people, I like the bubble hatch. I'm not. A, it's distinctive to the car. It doesn't look good overall. But if you get a 1979, it did not have the bubble hatch. It was just straight. It was, this is a nice car. It's rare. It's weird. This is so cool. It's period correct. The GTS fucking covers and shit, the offset on the wheels. They had like rare versions of this called like, like, I don't know, something cat. And then other, they had, they had real cool, weird versions of this. They had a two, three turbo version of that. Look at that. I'm a big fan. I like them. Coyote swapped this guy. It's probably ugly as shit, but look, it's light. It's a Fox body, and it, everything that's Mustang fits into it. So look at that. <whistles> very cool car. I like it very much. Fuck you if you don't like it. Plain and simple. I'm willing the car super surgy. Da -da -da -da. I know you've seen or heard about 69's new song. Uh, I forget the name of the song. Let's hear your take on him. Do you blame him for snitching? Wow, this is a touchy subject. Because I grew up in an area where you snitch, you get pop. Plain and simple. Not that I grew up in the Bronx, but I grew up in an area where you snitch, you get pop, and you just don't, you don't, you don't rat, you don't rat. If a cop comes up to you, and I remember there was a, an alley. I, I lived in, a, in a, an apartment complex. In the back, there was the porches overlooked an alley, and that's where the action happened: cops chasing people, fights, you name it. This crazy block on Maple Sergeant and um, forget Oak Street or some shit like that. Um. One time, these two were fighting, like fist fight. I mean, like you, <laughs> some aggressive fighting. Cops came, broke it up, but they caught one guy. Who's the guy you're fighting? He goes, "Ain't nobody." He's like, "Who you? Who's the guy you're fighting?" He's like, "Ain't nobody." You know why? Because he wanted to get him. He didn't want the cops getting him. He didn't want to snitch on him, even though he was fighting him. Um, so that's one of those things where you're you're kind of beholden to to the street. If you grew up street. You got to stay street. You chose that life. I didn't grow up street. I grew up around it. I didn't have to snitch on anybody because I was never in that world. I was never in that world. There's a lot of stuff that I know right now in the tuning community that I don't rat people out on because it doesn't matter and it's not affecting my life and it's, I'm going to look like a sour puss. But I honestly think if you were in that life and you're repping gangs and you're doing all that shit, you know, you unfortunately, snitching is looked and frowned upon in that in that community so you got to live by that code now some people are saying yeah but they were fucking with him and fucking with this girl and all this shit honestly i can't speak on that but i know that i can't i don't rat on anybody that i can't handle myself peyton pruitt says would you ever tune my ribeye steak burgers for more alt altitude for a little more juicy i'm making them on a skillet but want them to taste juicy and like they were smoked exactly imagine going to ruth chris steakhouse and telling them how to cook their steak you came to my shit to eat my steak you're not going to come to my shit where i'm going to charge you 120 bucks for a steak 
you're going to like it because you came here because the steak was that badass. But if you're going to go here and not recognize how badass the steak is, get the fuck over to McDonald's or In-N-Out Burger or Whataburger if you love onions. If you love onions, go to Whataburger. Do you think YouTubers are ruining the drag racing scene? I grew up around drag racing and these guys don't know what they're talking about and people just eat it up. I love the non-bobblehead content. The problem with that is while you are out there making fun as a drag racer, you're watching the channel that sucks. You're growing it. You're the problem. Oh, look at this idiot. Oh, guys, everyone, everyone, come over here. Look at this idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Please come watch. And he's sitting there over going, I just got 500 new subscribers and I'm making 5,000 bucks a month on YouTube. So what do you think he's going to do? He's going to keep doing the same shit. He's going to keep blowing cars up. To blow a car up in the in the Mustang community is a big deal. When my rotors locked up, I sat there and I went, should I even make this video? Should I just stay quiet? Because I don't want to come across as, look, my ship broke video. So I thought about it and I went, you know what? Maybe someone that goes through this in the future, because I have heard of a couple of Edelbrock blowers locking up and Greg Kong knows why. Um, maybe it'll help somebody. So that's the only angle I took. But honestly, it was it was weird putting that video out there because I did break something. <clears throat> Not something that I broke because I was doing burnouts or doing dumb shit with setups. But the YouTube community, I, would, I don't want to say is ruin, ruining drag racing. You're ruining it by allowing those channels to grow. If those channels, if nobody watches those channels, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? If no one is there to hear it, does it make a sound? It's one of those funny questions. So don't grow the channel. Don't watch it. But if you're sitting there watching it, you subscribe to it, you get notified when they come on and make a stupid video, you're ruining drag racing, not them. <clears throat> My best friend had an 86 Capri charcoal gray. My dad rebuilt the engine, bored dirty over, so it's a 306. Probably put a blower, packs and blower on it. That thing beats bikes, beat bikes back in its day. Yeah, back in its day, a badass bike was like a 600 GSXR. GSXR? Gixxer? <laughs> All right, let me get caught up on the peasant shit. Peasant, peasant, peasant. Legro says MMR sensor cranks out to get bound. If it's a GT500, you need a dual BAPS and injectors. Okay, they're talking about fuel system. Is there an oil additive like Slick 50, for example, that you can add to your oil to reduce friction in the motor that really works? <laughs> Bars stop leak. Alex, have you tested any engine intakes on an 18 plus? Yes, they're smaller than stock. Engine intakes, once we dial in the math curve, require less fuel than stock, meaning it is a smaller diameter than stock. And if it is an open air element, if it is an open air element, it's going to have higher IT. And if it's metal, it'll have higher IT. Let me see what else he said. I, I haven't heard good things about engines. I haven't heard good thing, good thing, bad things about engines. I just know that they're smaller. And the Canaan Blackhawk is smaller than stock diameter because I can see on my software, once I, once I adjust the math curve and I'm like, it's blue. It's smaller. <laughs> it's smaller than the cold air intake, meaning it flows less air, plain and simple. YouTube Corrupt says, true, when I would get the Dude and Blues or just, just the six videos on my feed, I just press do not recommend channel and keep moving. There it is. Exactly. If you do not want garbage being spread, don't, don't watch garbage. Don't watch garbage. It's real simple. I don't, okay. I don't watch Adam LZ. I'm not saying he's garbage. I don't watch Adam LZ. Huge channel. Massive channel. Right? So somebody is watching him. Cletus. I don't watch Cletus. Nice guy. I've met him many times. Know him personally. Don't watch his channel because it is not my wheelhouse. It is just not what I want to see. Huge channel. Massive channel. Tons of people watch him. Then I see a super informative channel. Not mine. Mine's. Just, I just talk shit. I've seen super informative channels and I'm like, why don't you have 5 billion subscribers? Plain and simple. People don't go on YouTube to learn most of the time. They go to go, <laughs> well, look at that. He's stupid. He, he jumped off a cliff and his head chopped off. So the medium is built for people to see quick, easy, dumb entertainment, right? So guys that blow up their Mustangs, you know how expensive it is to have a car-centric channel? You have the, the, the overhead is vehicles, vehicles. So you need to have a bunch of vehicles, do a bunch of things, swap them, do a bunch of crazy shit, employ a shop, 
break them, fix them. It is insanely expensive and some channels break even. I don't have that much of overhead. My channel is me. I started seeing where my channel was headed. I'm like, wait a minute. I have an 18 Mustang or 19. I have a 15 Mustang and, 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 and a supercharged Fairmont. The monthly nut to maintain, insure, and drive those vehicles is over $2,000. Just to have, drive, insure, register every month, 2000 bucks out of my pocket. Gasoline, blah, 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 wear and tear, da, 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 da. That is insane overhead if my channel was car-centric, meaning those cars. And nobody was watching those things because I wasn't willing to do dumb shit like blow them up and beg people for parts. I don't beg anybody for parts. If anyone has repped their stuff on my channel, they came to me. Ultimate Header came to me. Um, VMP came to me. GeForce came to me. FIC came to me. I never reach out to people. And I'm happy that I'm you know dealing with the people that I deal with. But the overhead is ridiculous. So those channels need dumb shit. And dumb shit gets attention. One of the videos that I did see that blew my mind <clears throat> was, I think Staying Mode had like a million views on a, we snuck an EcoBoost Mustang into a coyote race. <laughs> a million people watched that. I went, yeah, it's the end of the earth. It's the end of days. <clears throat> Will a Bly Supply Slick work better on asphalt versus a drag radio? 14... Nitrous 6 already running ET Street SS's and I can't leave hard enough on a 4C stall. Yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd be better off, Yonsei, on a Hoosier QuickTime Pro, for sure, or a Mickey Thompson ET Drag stiff wall for sure. I have a supercharged 462 valve and it's dope. Let the fifth, let, let the shit talk begin. Marcus Haldrison. That's fine. I, I'm not going to talk shit if you're happy with your car. Just don't tell me it's better than a Coyote. That's all. <clears throat> What do you think? Of, what do you think my upstream? Okay, why do you think my upstream O2 sensors are failing? I replaced it. I replaced three times, and I get a P two nine one two one nine A code. It comes and goes. Mustang Ken Bell long tube header ninety one P two nine one A. Here we go. P two nine one A on Google. It says air fuel ratio imbalance. So, do you keep replacing one sensor, or do you replace both sensors? Because in my opinion, when you replace sensors, you should replace them in pairs. You don't replace one spark plug or just one bank of spark plugs, do you? You replace them all. And when it comes to sensors failing, I always like to buy them in pairs so I know both are new. So I don't know why you're getting an air-fuel ratio imbalance unless you have an exhaust leak just above that O2 sensor and it's reading 20 or 30% differently than the other bank. That could also cause an imbalance issue. Been a fan for many years now, Joe Daniel says. Can you make a comp YOLO vid of all your best stuff, compilation YOLO vid? I think it would be funny and get a lot of clicks. It won't get a lot of clicks um, because YOLO douchebag, the humor that YOLO douchebag has is stupid and it's also like um, cynical and a lot of people don't like that. They just like either redneck stupid or like super smart and informative, and YOLO is none of that. So I, I don't know that I'd take the time to sit there and make YOLO compilation videos. DSX axles for E85, DSS axles or an E85 lung tune for the first mod. A manual 18 GT that'll see the track on weekends. Nervous, gonna break the axles first time out. I would get a lung tune first because you're not gonna be at the track all the time, right? You're not going to be on the track all the time. You're going to be on the street most of the time. So you'll enjoy an E85R tune more than you would the axles. The axles are just going to hold up to some abuse only when you're at the track. But what about your drive shaft, right? Let's say you have axles and you go out to the track and your axles are fine, but then your drive shaft fucking becomes a pretzel. Should have gotten a drive shaft, right? So now you're like, Alex, uh, drive shaft or long tube header. <laughs> I do the E85 R tune. Hurricane Logan says, just saying hi. We talked back in 2015 and I had the Grabber Blue Nitrous 3.7 and you put your decal on it and I had your shirt for the first time you started selling things. Crazy how far you came. Hey, yo. That's what she said. I got a new 502, so I'm not gay. <laughs> I think his name is, I forget. He's an army guy. I think he's in the army. Yeah, I remember you, brother. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Big Stewie, 1686, $2. Hey, remember Logan when um, anything Coyote related like mattered? 
And then there was a group of guys in that Anything Coyote group that thought that they were writing all of my skits all the time. So they wanted credit. They wanted credit for the shit that I was putting out there. And they were mad that I was actually making it or making something of myself. So they were out there trying to put spin on it. Like, he's a fraud. He's not really funny. We write all the jokes for him. And then there was an offshoot um, group called, like, nothing coyote ncmr like nothing coyote and mustang related and then we troll we had fun we'd bounce shit back and forth but i would make the videos for it based on ideas they wouldn't write the shit i'd have like ideas and just kind of put it out there and they got mad that when i started getting traction and i didn't suck their dick which is a very common thing Ooh, guys do you know how many friend friend friends you know how many friends i've lost because they thought that they thought that they wrote my shit they thought that you're not, you wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't be where you are if it wasn't for me. I'm like, motherfucker, you Johnny come lately. I've been here 40 fucking years. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden they made me. And I'm like, you weren't out there. You weren't out there homeless for a bit. You weren't out there sucking dick. Not literally, but you know, you were out there eating shit. Like literally fucking making no money, busting your ass, trying to get something going on the social media stuff. And finally I'm starting to see some success. And that's when they start hating you. The people that are going to hate you or diss you the most are people that are closest to you. You think a lot of people that are going to hate on you are far away and they throw rocks from far away. Nah, man, the people that are going to hate on you are the ones closest to you because they think that they're responsible for your success. And then when you prove or show that I don't really need you around, I'm, I'm good, then they get bent out of shape. And you're like, sorry, bro. I mean, I sorry, you weren't part of this. Sorry. I mean, it's just, it's a weird way of being. I can't imagine someone like, like the Adam LZs of the world and the Cletuses who have millions of followers and then maybe they had a buddy or something growing up that was close to them that had to get left behind because they were kind of being a drag and they're like, oh, you know, you know, I thought we were boys and I'm like, yeah, we're boys, but you're being a hindrance to my, to my escalation. So you're going to have to stay back. And then I'm sure they have way many more people like that than I do. Do you need a tune if you port the intake manifold on a LUN tune? No, because it is scaled. So the MAF sensor is scaled. The MAF curve is scaled for additional airflow. So if you flow more air, you're just going to hit another cell, which is accounted for. I would always data log it, though, to make sure. <clears throat> Big Stewie gave me money. Didn't say anything. Big Stewie gave me money again. Then said, I have a 2011 2.3 Roush, 1050 x 76 millimeter pulley. What a weird size. Is that, is that VMP putting out there a weird size? Sizes on shit. I upgraded my pump based off of your video since it's old. If I wanted to switch to E85, will I need a BAP to stay in the 650 range? You cannot do E85 with a Lund tune. Lund tune. Because we want dual pumps and return style fuel system to have overhead. We, we're just not going to support Dietchworks 400 and a BAP on a supercharged car with E85, sir. D self gave me 20 bucks and said because <laughs> appreciate that brother do you need a tune if you port the intake manifold i already said that you said no but log it just to make sure that it's happy <clears throat> will the vmp gen 3r outperform a fifth gen whipple Ooh, danny hernandez and then he said it again so he gave me f oh, god damn it so <laughs> there's things that i know that i can't say because the company that is repping that particular blower wants to save it for themselves. This is what I will say. Both maxed out. I think they're comparable. Now, Cobra Jet Mustangs in the Cobra Jet program that rev to like 11,000 RPMs or 10,000 RPMs, those front feed Gen 5s are making 13 to 1400 flywheel horsepower. Now, John Lund Sr.'s GT500, which is a 5.8 with 11 to 1 compression, did make 1299, basically 1300 rear wheel, rear, rear wheel horsepower. The Cobra Jets R50s are actually 5.2s, I think, and they're spinning them to the moon and they're running well into the sevens. So, this is what I'm going to tell you, Danny. I think both of them maxed out are comparable. That's the best thing I can tell you. <clears throat> because I know there's all people that are not riding one camp and another camp not riding another camp. And I'm here being Switzerland going, I I think I think both will run the same if they're both maxed out. Which would you go with? 
for a K member on an 07 GT? Team Z or BMR? Team Z. Team Z makes badass shit. And I'm not a big fan of that other company at all. Um, at all. Plain and simple. I'm just not. So I do Team Z over them or UPR over them. Look, UPR makes an S197K member. That's what I had. Team Z makes great stuff. I think Steeda is getting into the S197 game too. But if you have a relationship with BMR, by all means. But I personally don't like them. I have a Turbo Fox Body, 500 horsepower T5, and enjoy beating up on stock coyotes. Of course you do. <laughs> of course a 500 horsepower, 3,400 pound car will beat a 430 horsepower, 3,800 pound car. Of course it'll do that, Arturo. Hello from Wisconsin. Have you had any experience with the 3 Whipple, with the Whipple 132 throttle body and a 19 GT350? Yes. The throttle body seems to be a pain in the ass for drivability. No, I don't know what you're talking about. So Ty Rawls, Brent Speed, recently built a front feed Gen 5 Whipple with a 132 throttle body and a 123 cold air, Torco, pump gas, 800 rear wheel horsepower, and he states it drives so smooth. I believe his customer is in Ohio. His name is Don, and I believe, I think, I think his name is Don Gift if I'm not mistaken, and I believe it's a, if it's the same Don Gift that had a Roush RS3 that we tuned back at VMP, who is an electrician, I, if it's him, that car, he's going to enjoy, that guy can drive, he's going to enjoy the shit out of that car. Guy seems to have some money, he's a successful dude, frequents Florida a lot, and um, if that's his car, he's going to be a happy dude, but no, I have, we do not have any issues with the 132 throttle body on a GT350 at all. Uh, Edre, E-D-R-E, Edre Ratana. Hey, what's up, Alex? I've been watching since the YDBT was taken off. I, I wish Mopar and Chevy World had a person with knowledge like you, eh, like you, and share with the people. I'm getting into the new Coyote coming from a Hellcat. Awesome, you're coming from a Hellcat. That's interesting. Um, I want to talk to David Clunkerton. I'm going to see if I can hit up David Clunkerton. He now works for Roush. He knows a lot about the LS stuff, so I want to, not live, I want to do it, you know, on the side and edit it. I want to talk to him and I want to get well versed. Not that I want to become the the, the, the authority because I don't know shit about LSs, but he knows so much about LSs because he worked at Vengeance Racing. So he knows beginning to end what this motor should make stock, what this mod will make with that mod. So he'd be a great wealth of knowledge and hopefully I can get him on, on the horn, make a video and you guys will learn a little bit about the LS world because I don't know shit about it. Thanks for putting out great info and putting up with all my stupid questions. Keep up the great work. Devin Marth. Which would you go? I already, I already said that. Hey, what's up, Alex? Been, got it. Have a Turbo Fox body. Got it. Hello from Wisconsin. Got it. And Danny Hernandez. Got it. Lakin Easel. As L. I put a Whipple on my NA, on my NA E85 R2 and F150, and now I lost cylinder 7. Can you compensate in that with the revision or the 100 shot? <laughs> so he lost number 7, wants to put a 100 shot and compensate that in the in the, in the revision. <laughs> It's actually pretty funny. Another great show, Pragmatic Lunatic says, thanks for keeping me entertained while I swap out my wife's exhaust. Awesome. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, I'm going to start getting close to ending it. I've been on for a, an hour and 52 minutes. I've been on for a very long time. Again, another great show. You guys have been awesome. You support the channel really well. Again, the support of the channel causes me to upgrade equipment, get stuff for the red car to get you content. So now the car is going to get an exhaust, going to get a 5C or a 6F converter, some big dumb converter. It's going to get some 373s from one of you guys. Uh, uh, one, one of you guys has a 373 pumpkin you want to trade out for my 315. Going to go ahead and do that and get to the track once it opens up, once this COVID-19 stuff eases up. Unfortunately, we are now in the basically the summer here. It is May. It is in the 90s and high 80s here in Florida. So my ETs will not be awesome, but they'll be pretty damn good. The best the car's ever run is a 12.3, so I hope to get out to the track pretty soon. Uh, JRM Mad Tor Junior Mad Torque. <laughs> Looking at having Lund to my 03 Cobra. Oof. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, fucking Cobra. Oh, dude, you're killing me. Anyway. <clears throat> Built AccuFat motor with twin turbos. Holly EFI Dominator. Bye. <laughs> love ya. J, J, J Matt Torque, I love ya. We're probably not going to tune that. I mean, probably not going to tune that because remotely, to do it remotely, we got to... <laughs> It, do you not have a standalone tuner in your area that's familiar with Holly? That's what I would recommend. Look, I, because Lund Racing, Lund Racing can tune it. Will we tune it? Probably not. 
Probably not. That's something that either has to be in-house and we're not doing that. And remotely will be a nightmare if you have mechanical issues we cannot properly diagnose. So what I would do is this. You have a Holly Dominator. You should definitely reach out to someone who is familiar with that setup and does that for a living. A Holly tuner in your area that is known for doing that. Probably has a base map. That'll be boom done. So that's what I would do if I was you. I just don't think Lund Racing is looking to take on that kind of setup yet or even going forward. We're more like an OEM uh, control system and once in a while we'll dabble in Holly tuning. But I'm going to tell you, it don't pay because what we would have to charge you for it to be worth it to tune that car, you probably are not willing to pay and you probably can get someone that's way more familiar with it than us. That's the honest answer. I'd love to take your money and bullshit you to death, but let's be honest, you're probably better off with someone who has the time, knows the operating system better than we do, and has done it many times before. That, in my opinion, is your best bet than to have Lund tune that particular setup. What supporting mods will I need for a VMP Gen 2R 13 boss pushing 800 Robo horsepower? I mean, to push, you need E85. You need a 69 millimeter pulley, a 10% lower. Gen 2R, 69 millimeter pulley and a 15% lower. Uh, ID 1050Xs uh, or ID 1000s. Return style fuel system in E85. And uh, cold air like a PMAS 120 or a JLT 123 if you have to. And it should get you close. J uh, Junior Mad Torque says, okay, I'm in Houston. Is there anyone you recommend? <clears throat> So if you're in Houston, um, hit up people like um, like Manuel Gomez at midnight. Hit up uh, Aces uh, Aces and Performance and Exhaust. If you're closer to the Pasadena area, I don't, they might have moved recently. They, I think they're like in Humble or Woodlands or something. So that might not be your best bet. But hit up. I would go to I would go to um, Manuel Gomez at Midnight Performance and ask him if he knows anybody that's willing to tune that. And if the car is mechanically sound. Uh, junior mad torque i'm saying mechanically sound um and manuel can verify that it's mechanically sound he probably knows a holly tuner or two local that might be able to help you out so hit up midnight performance and we'll see if you guys can do business hopefully you can if not then i really don't know that that world of, of uh, standalone tuning say my name good show dude your mother should have swallowed says say my name good show dude Marcus Haldorhoser says, even though I'm not in the coyote business, I've learned a lot from your videos. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, sir. And I think let's end it there because I don't want you guys to keep constantly, you know, asking questions. Sorry, I couldn't get to the peasant chat, but the pay chat was pretty lit today. I appreciate everyone that tuned in and I really try to get to everyone, try to dabble into the peasant chat. Um, if you guys want to talk a little shit on Thursday on the dating channel, I'll try to do that for you guys, but it'll be mostly dating stuff specifically. Um, so let me try to get out of here before you guys start paying any more money and tune in next week. I'll try to talk some more shit, see what happens. Uh, and for those of you that know, the other channel, the dating channel, I'll be on Thursday. I released a video today talking about what questions you should ask on a first date. You know, switch over, see that one. But in any case, I'll see you guys next time. Talk to you later.